This week's Red and Under, we find ourselves on the great Gold Coast. A place where the golden sand stretch as far as the eye can see. It's a place where the interest rates are criminally high. Well, good day, mates. Here we are. We're in the flesh after a brief hiatus, a couple of weeks absence. We're back bigger than ever in real time. You know, we've said before, as Voldemort once said, I can touch you now mm. um, amongst your presence. I thought, Finally. you know, what better way to an- announce our return um, to the podcasting world than by me traveling across the whole continent of Australia to yep. be here with you in person. Um, and it sure is nice to see your face. Yeah, it's nice to see your face. Um, you're looking very fresh something new about you something there's i feel like there's a new energy coming out of you at the moment simon you have you done something have you changed your look in any way no no pretty no? pretty normal. same old same old nothing really to note uh, what the fuck um i guess maybe you might be talking about my luscious mustache ah um, yes that must be it that- how long did it take you to grow that mustache a couple of days i wish i could grow one That's taken I me four feel, years to grow. I could feel a certain confidence oozing from you, and it must, you're right, it must be that horrific slug of a moustache you've got on your top lip there. Maybe, maybe. Um, it's good to be here. Should we address the elephant in the room, Alistair? Do we want to talk about... Uh, no, he's a labradoodle. <laughs> That's a good one! <laughs> it's really bad. Do we want to talk about what just happened... A few moments ago, or do we want to like sure. leave that out? Let's and... address the rumors. You, do you want to tell us, viewers what happened? Absolutely. Yeah, go. Uh, <laughs> I just shit myself. Oh no! Are we, you talking about how we just filmed an entire podcast? And do then... we tell them? Oh, uh, you you want to tell them that we filmed an entire podcast and then the audio didn't work and we had to scrap the entire podcast and um, get dressed in these outfits again and start from scratch? You want to tell them that? It's our little secret. Maybe. Better not. Better not. Better not. Better not. Better not. Better not. Okay. Well, let's keep forging ahead then. Yeah. Um, you've been away for two weeks. You've been a working boy up yep. in the remote districts of Queensland, yep. Australia. Yep. Working hard. Have you had your finger on the pulse with Sarah? Have you been, you know, keeping up to date with the few changes that have been happening? A few changes. I mean, <laughs> obviously, this weekend is a is a monumental weekend for Sarah users. We've finally got to the the new structure, the new, everything's new. And, and to say that I've been kind of overthinking would be an understatement, overthinking understatement. I've basically, you know, I finished my day of work in Mackay. I'm tired. I'm exhausted. What better way to expend what little energy I have left than scouting players, listing players for sale, taking them back off the market, sending out offers for players, cancelling those offers, having a freak out, panicking, scouting for some new players, trying to think if I'm going to go into contenders or challenges or champions or what. Um, yeah, I've been kind of, I've been freaking out for like six weeks straight, Simon. I'm going insane. Well, that's fun, but you haven't been sinning. So I just want to know that, you know, you've, <laughs> you've, Excuse you. you've seen, obviously there's the New Testament, the Old Testament, of course. Have you been adhering to those rules or have you been sinning? Um, is this confession time? Well, it can so be. Rare it confessions. Depends, what, it depends what you've gotten up to. Thou shall not plan. Should I show you some of the things we've seen during the week? Like it's been a little Please. bit of a break since our last podcast. Yeah. Um, now, as many Sarah managers know, we've been blessed uh, to have the international break come upon us in the past couple of weeks or so, mm. uh, meaning that, you know, uh, no one has teams to roll out. Yeah. I thought mm-hmm. I'd show you this little clip uh, from the great soccer nation of Georgia. Of Georgia? Yeah. Okay. Um, their monumental win over Greece. He, they've won the penalty shootout. Amazing. Like, look, the girls love it. Celebrating. Yep. How good. How good for Georgia. Look at the fans, they love it, right? This is fantastic. It's weird that they give Georgia a, a oh, team in okay. the. Okay, hang on. Oh, okay, here we go. Some, some fans. That's okay, because, you know, like the fans are jumping That's in. All right. That's all right. That's all right. Overall, okay. the mood is good. Sweet. It's good. Um, still, all right. Okay, it's starting to get a few more on there, but. Wow, they're, they're, they're saying. Celebrating. Okay. More fan shots. Yep. Oh, Let's okay. get on the pitch, boys. Oh, then a few more people. Okay, he's been hit in the face. Then it really, like, gets out of hand. 
Holy hell. And basically, players completely swarm. This is a nil all win. <laughs> Just to clarify, a few flares there. Um, it just keeps getting worse. Basically, wow. like all security out at the door. And this is how they celebrate good times. And I think all the Georgia players might be dead. They all got trampled to death. Yeah. Um, so a whole fresh new squad going to the Euros. All right, purchase your Georgia B players. I love that. It's that moment because, like, we love it when fans get to interact with the players. The players come over. They, a bit of passion. You know, like, yeah. How good. But my favourite thing is once the player does that and they will interact with the fans, but then the immediate regret because some fans just start, like, grabbing them on the hair and, like, and then they're like, oh, oh. and, like, you've got to still try and roll with it. Everyone's excited, but you're fearing for your life a little now, bit. Now, that reminds me of something. If you can just quickly search for me uh, Fenerbahce uh, pitch invasion and then I don't know how to spell it, but try and spell, I think, B-A-T-S, B-A-T-S yep. B A T S S H. Anyway, here we go. This is the one. Mishi Batchway. So, this is another, you know, look at this. Bang! Dude! That is. Is that a light bulb? Light kicked him in the head. That's the player. The player's done the spin kick. I'm I know. Fan. I know. That's incredible. I love that. That's fantastic. Because apparently, so Fenerbahce have. Uh, have been kind of considering pulling out of the league for this season because the Trabz- Spor fans just came on the pitch and just started attacking the Fenerbahce players. And Batshuayi there is having none of it. Spin kick. Not just like, oh, you know, get out of my face. Preempted spin kick at a running fan, which I think that's my player of the day that's for sure. That's a decisive. That is a decisive. That is a decisive. Give that man a decisive. Now, it wouldn't be a week that was without a horrible miss. Yeah, Continuing on with the uh, Euro qualifiers, not Euro qualifiers, but the international break shenanigans. This miss uh, between Jamaica and USA now oh, yeah. was an offside eventually, but he okay. knew nothing of it at the time. Whoa. <laughs> well, firstly, he's taking for a ride. Yep, here we go. Passes. And just a little tap in. Oh, oh the Jamaican women's team. And just look across the team at you a little bit. Oh, that's, that's bad. bad. That's, bad. that's bad. Yeah. Now, on the other end of the spectrum, to go from, you know, international level football yep. to one of the greatest leagues in the world, of course, the A-League. Of course. Um, an absolute almighty goal scored during the midweek. It was a Tuesday night in Melbourne. It was raining. Massive crowd, as you can see here, Alistair. Yep. Uh, Terry Antonis from Melbourne City. there. Little... Have a hit, mate. Oosh. Oh, yes. That is a hell of a goal. And I, I love the fact that it was... Already, like, was it 6 0 at this point? <laughs> wow. If that's not enough to get so rare to get the A League on board, I don't know what is. Well, I think they need it. If you look at the footage, there's about five fans in the crowd. Um, yeah. So no one actually knows that this happened. Tuesday night, Tuesday night, you know, but still, that's not great. 38 fans sh- showing up to a, an A League game is not ideal. Yeah. So what you're saying, Simon, is is it time for Sorare to save the A League? Well, I think so. I just think, you know, like we've seen with the MLS, like it might be, a, it's a great product. <laughs> Sorry, buddy. <laughs> Hello? Hello? Yeah? Why you kick my dog? Um, it's a great product. Take the couch. I'm professional. Um, it's a great product, but it gives extra incentive for us down under, for example. We probably wouldn't have known much about the MLS mm. or the Belgian league without Sarah. So I think, you know, I didn't even know there was a Belgian night, league. It's, it's a tough gig for the A-League marketing mm. guru to try and promote it. Come to the, come to the game, they yep. say. It's 9v10. But why? It's Tuesday night. Now, it's I'm raining. telling you why, because there's some lucky bugger in the stands yep. of all the 5,000 people that turned up in the giant stadium, and he's got a Melbourne City stack, and he's just creamed his pants when it got to 7-0. That's right. He's decisives all around. You know, the bloke next to him is crying because he's got a Western Sydney Wanderers sack. It means more. It does. It, it really does. It, I mean, what are they playing for at the moment? What are the players playing for? Do they even know what they're playing the love for? love of football or something stupid like... Yeesh. Good luck with that. Um, now, that's just got me thinking, Simon. Okay, so let's say Soraya gets the A-League on board. I mean, it's... It's coming. It's inevitable. Yeah. It's inevitable. I mean, it's not like prices could go any lower. So let's just bring them on. Flood the market. I don't think we've had an issue with over like supply. Over supply. No, no, no. That's that's not the reason. Um, it's because of uh, household spending. Um, now, when they bring the A league on, contenders. I'm looking at contenders, and I'm thinking it's a little crowded. 
yeah. looking at challenges and thinking, nah, you know, MLS is there, MLS, yeah. you know, you've got Portuguese league, but it, oh, it just doesn't feel like a challenger league to me. So that just begs the question. Do we open up that sixth slot? We've got five leagues. They're okay. League one, Serie A, A league. Real cat amongst the pigeons. Yeah. Just, you know, add to the quality. And exactly. I'm thinking like, you know, we talk about logic, like, mm-hmm. you know. We do talk about we logic. We talk about logic a lot. You, you, you play you play a Kevin De Bruyne to win a buffet. But now, a Terry Antonis. now the logic is yeah. you play your De Bruyne to win a Terry Antonis. That's right. For that inevitable 7 mil Melbourne City win. It's free real estate. I mean, it makes sense. It makes sense. Logic, some would say. It does make a lot of logic. Um, yeah, I mean, I can't see where they're, else they're going to go. Well, they're too good for the other leagues. They are too good. Because, like, we've seen this in the past. Like, any Australian that goes to an overseas league, like, they mm. just crush it and, like, they have to put them on the bench because they're just doing too well and it's, like, embarrassing mm. all the other players. That's so, true. like, that's why all of our top talent, you know, some would say, oh, they just go across and they die on the bench for the rest of their careers. It's because they're, they're actually too good. So they're just trying to keep the integrity of the league together. Yeah. Okay, cool. Make it happen. Yeah, I like it. Now, I also need to bring something up because since we've been gone, um, obviously I've got my Asian boys. Mm. It hasn't gone as well as probably would have hoped. Um, no real reward as of yet. I, I should have won a reward last week uh, only for Alster to convince me to go in a different direction and cost myself a good reward. Yeah. Um, Ethereum mm. now just quietly has gone to the moon. Uh-huh. You know, we, we thought that the Premier League was going to take Serena to the moon. ETH has gone on and it's lonesome. Yeah. Absolutely skyrocketed. Basically, when I sold my Ethereum or put my Ethereum into Serena to buy these Asian boys, it's gone gangbusters. Mm. Are we moving the goalposts? Because at the moment, Serena's staying in the same spot while Ethereum is absolutely going to the moon. Mm. Whereas in the past, we'd say, oh, well, Ethereum's down. That's why, like, Serena's struggling. Yeah, um, I mean, I made the bold prediction not that long ago. I was like, once you know, once ETH gets its thing to get, once crypto starts to make a bit of a return, you know, that's when Serena's fortunes have turned around. Wrong. I'd say it's probably not doing that. It's not quite as correlated as we thought. Um, I do. I will say, I think like this crypto bull run uh, has been a bit under the radar. Like ETH and Bitcoin are at prices pretty much level with the last bull run peak. Like. They're pretty ridiculous for these prices, but no one's really talking about it. Like, there's not that online hype around it. People aren't buying a bunch of shit coins. People aren't buying pictures of, you know, magical dolphins or, you know, groovy giraffes or whatever the, you know, whatever they might be. Um, there's not that kind of hype going. I think we are in the middle of like a bit of a recession. People are like, I reckon? Well, you wouldn't know it. Just look at this. But um, times are tough. Times are tough. Things are hard, you know, a, a head of lettuce. Was once you know three dollars a kilo. Look, you're pushing like twenty eight dollars a kilo now for just your basic iceberg lettuce. Yeah, that's facts. There's definitely no mayo put on that. No, no, I don't even get me started on mayo. The costs are through the roof. Um, so I think it's like a bit of a it's a it's a weird one. I think Soraya will benefit from kind of that real bull market where everyone's just spending money. That potentially could be where Soraya could be picked up and taken to the moon um the last bull run obviously we didn't have limiteds there was a few other things at play that kind of meant that you know it was kind of more of a high rollers only kind of table and now we don't have that so i don't know i'm at a bit of a I'm, i can't make any more predictions let's put it that way but please tell me else you talked about your strategy of you were collecting eth from your cap 240 super rare team is that mm. right now of course you would have held on to that eth into your wallet and you've actually. seen that Go yeah, up. yeah, yeah. I actually have. Yeah. Oh, fantastic! I thought you would have like gone out and bought all these cards. I'm no, well, proud of you. yeah, thanks. Stuck with the strategy. <laughs> it wasn't so much a strategy of like I'm going to hold on to this. It was just that I, and I've said for quite a few months now, I'm, I feel pretty settled with my gallery. I feel like I've got enough pieces to that I don't need to like build out any more than I kind of need to. Wrong. So. I'm quite satisfied with where it's at, and that has just had the, the added benefit of the ETH that I've been stashing away. It's just been my buying power has, has gone up through the roof. Which is well, great. this is careful, Alston, because if the higher powers of Serrera are listening, this 
podcast could get shut down if you're saying things like, I'm actually satisfied, I'm content with my gallery, I'm not going to go out and spend money. Like, oh, we locked the doors. I'm actually making money. Um... <laughs> Hola. If this just goes blank into a green screen after this, then we know we've said too much. Basically, the way to win Sarah is to just hold ETH. Yeah. And don't spend it on yeah. Sarah. Hold it at all times. Okay. Let's move on quickly. Um, well, I think we should jump straight into the biggest news, obviously. Now, I'm a simple boy, right? I like to sometimes go into my Sarah after a few beers and it's nice and simple. You know, I just roll my boys out in the wrong kind of lineup, don't look at the fixtures, don't play the boys at home. Yeah. In a way, this new update, the new structure of Sarah at the moment, it's all a little bit confusing. All the divisions are in and prize pools all over the shop. They've almost become a buffer for anyone who's had a few too many beverages trying to play Sarah because you actually you wouldn't be able to find your way to like your lineups. It's all very confusing. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Is it yeah. not? Like, I know you give me shit all the time for saying that, oh, I, you don't know when the game weeks are, blah, blah, blah. But you have to admit, it is actually quite a minefield. It's pretty overwhelming, I'll be honest. Because- Five minutes later. <laughs> no, 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 no. Because, <laughs> oh. I mean, for someone like me, I haven't got the biggest gallery in terms of quantity, but I've got enough cards that, you know, Sorrera has basically said, you can enter a team in these divisions, and I've got like 38 <laughs> options. Yeah, it's a lot. <laughs> and it is, it is a lot. And you've got to try and, and then trying to find the prize pools is a bit of a nightmare. Yeah, it's going to take some getting used to. That's for sure. Um, no more kind of, you know, sloppy three beers deep lineup setting. You're going to, you know, maybe have some Nicorette gum, really get into a focus, put on some like, you know, uh, frequency music and yeah. really lock in. Whale sounds. Yes, yeah, whale sounds. <laughs> concerning though because i remember my one rivals win that i got over you i was like absolutely blind so maybe i do my best work after a mm. few beers i've been trying to get beers into this podcast for a long time i do love that like you know the audacity that you'll have when you're six beers deep you're like division one baby i'm gonna win it well i mean you gotta get to division actually, one first well that's the other thing so i'm in division two and three yep which I'm not gonna lie. I was kind of surprised with. I was expecting I was gonna be king of the king the, of the dweebs. King of the dweebs. Yeah. Um. You know, rolling it in with all these newbies. Yeah. With my four years of experience and two wins. Yeah. What have you got to show for that four <laughs> years of experience? It's a lot of good times. Oh, how far we've come. I mean, you have a senior now. Four years ago, that would have been the goal, right? Yeah. So, in some ways, you've won. It's been a boy man. In some ways, you've won. Yeah. yeah exactly. Well, like you always said that. You buy these these JPEGs so that they've got long term utility. Of course. Let's just pretend that I bought this Sasenia when he was a young pup. When he was an ETH. Yeah. When he was now I got him for point zero four and he's still going down in on price. The streets of Florianopolis. Mm. Yeah. So it's exciting. But what division are you in? What are you are you in the, the high rollers table? I'm in division one. I'm in division one. Uh for Challengers Super Rare and I think contenders, and then I'm in division one for my champion rares because of my spurs stack i think i they've been a bit i think i don't know what their algorithm is i don't know how they've put people where they put them i think it's like a dartboard Dart all right board, yeah. got, we've got uh alistair rathburn all right and they spin up like i think it's a rotating dartboard and they just thump, wherever it lands <laughs> he's in division okay oh my god it's the lunch wheel it's like the division wheel the division wheel now, yeah. now you're talking now yeah. you're talking um yeah i, I think i'm I'm a bit torn because, so my dilemma basically, Simon, over the last, since they announced the roadmap, I immediately thought, fuck, what am I going to do with my Hyungmin son? What am I going to do with my Show Sasaki? I've now got a third smasher to contend with. I've got Darwin Quintero, who has been smashing his face off in Colombia. Might be Jesus because that man actually was dead. He was gone. He was like, gone. He is coming. Yeah. Yeah. Darwin Lazarus Quintero. As we celebrate Easter here in Australia, maybe we should be celebrating Darwin Quintero Day something. <laughs> I'm all for it. I'll eat some chocolate for Darwin. Um, the man is just I- inevitable. It's like, right, because he, he often plays on like a Tuesday afternoon. He's my last player in my lineup. I'm like, if he scores, I should be on for a good, good prize. Never fails. He has not let me down in like seven weeks. Anyway, but he's a contender. I mean, is that fair? Is this the world we're living in that Darwin Quintero's and contenders, a 38 year old man playing in the Colombian league? I mean, come on. Um, Just screams pedigree. Exactly. Um, 
So I've got these players that, and then I've got 80% of my gallery is challenges, which I'm happy with. I'm happy that, that I've got some good cards in there, but what do I do with these outliers? Now I've bounced back and forth between, okay, I could sell Hyung Min Sun at a premium because he is one of the, he's probably the best Premier League forward by far. And people can use him in the in-season tournament because he's a super rare, you know, he's just a great card. So I could sell him for a decent chunk and then I could go out there and buy some really good challenger pieces and just try and dominate that league. My issue here, Simon, is that the best challenger players aren't going to be good next year. They're going to be playing for Bournemouth or, you know, you know what I mean? Like Joey Veerman, Olivier Boscagli, um, you know, you know, you name any of the top 10 in challenges right now, there's little to no guarantee that they're going to be staying and scoring at the same output this time next year. I could also go and buy MLS players. <laughs> Not going to do that. That would be foolish. That would be foolish. So I'm a bit, I'm a bit stuck. So I think what I'm, what I've landed on, and this could change eight times by the end of the night. I think I'm going to just play my best five boys in All Star Super Rare. Because that's still August. That's still until August. And look, if I win a contender player then great, that's one more player that I can put with Show. I can put with Darwin, I can potentially go, right, well, maybe I need to put some resources towards building a good contenders team. Or if I manage to do really well and pull, you know, a decent defender from the Serie A, then maybe I can, you know, start to dip my toe in champion a little bit. So I'll kind of let the so rare gods guide me. And obviously this is all dependent on winning rewards. But if I can win some rewards, then I'll, I can use that to kind of shape my strategy and then really reassess come August. Normally I would laugh at you for saying any kind of strategy that's, oh, you just win something and then do this. But to be fair, you have been absolutely crushing it. Thank I mean, you. you've been raking the rewards in weekly. Like you picked up a Zhao Mario. Zhao Mario, yes. I, I think that's solid because like we've seen like what he can do. Yeah. And then like outside of that, he's like, he's solid with a bit of upside. He's really the, the perfect tier three to win because it's like he can be an absolute smasher. Yeah. He's just out of form. Yeah. So that's why he's a tier three. He's not a tier three because... You know, so the guy above me, rest in peace, he, he finished 13th, I finished 14th. He got some teenager from Orlando who's never played a game. Now, this is, we need, this is an open letter to Sarah. I went, we've talked about rewards and how shit they are for so long. Common sense has to dictate that just because someone is 17, you have to take some context into it. A 17-year-old who is on the Orlando reserves team He's not the same as a 17-year-old who's on PSG's reserves team. They're not the same thing. We, levels. We, we, levels. We really, it, it, if, I'm so glad it wasn't me that got that reward because I would be kicking off. But I, someone out there, someone needs to check on that guy because that guy's probably never going to play. But then even if, like, the reality is his most likely scenario is he's going to come up into the MLS, right? And he's probably going to be fine. Yeah, he's okay. fine. Um, okay, so then this guy happens to be the one guy that breaks the trend and is an absolute smasher in the yep. MLS. Yeah. Fantastic. Enjoy that one year of utility before he gets sent off to Europe somewhere and he probably sucks. Yeah, so basically what you're saying to this person who's finished 13th in All-Star Super Talking Rare, to you. Talking to you out there. Just wait three or four years until they hit their peak and then enjoy him for about six months and then he's gone. Yeah. 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 So, I mean, worth it. Tier three. So, rare's the only game where you actually prefer to be finishing lower. I mean, like, look at your super yeah, rare true. rewards. Like, you'd prefer to finish with a tier three and get a guy who, like, Joe Mario, he's solid. Yep. Then you finish, like, eighth and get some 17 year old. You either player. have to finish first or, like, 44th. Yeah. 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 Which. 44th, something might, nice might happen. Nothing good is going to happen from eighth. Sort of brings us on to the rewards now. Under the new structure, we've also got yep. champion, challenger, contender. Mm. Since we still have All-Star, so you're saying that you want to roll your boys at an All-Star, are the rewards going to be any good in All-Star or are they going to prioritize the Ooh. champion, contender, challenger route? That's a good question. Um, you'd have to think that they're going to prioritize the new tournaments. They don't want people playing All-Star because that's for people like me who don't want to go out and spend money to, you know, fill out a team in contenders or champion. It's for those people who are just content to settle. And 
that's not what Soraya is all about. This whole new update has been geared towards don't settle. So yeah, I'm fully expecting that the rewards are going to be pretty terrible. But again, I'd rather just win some stuff and see how I go than waste players like Hyungman's son, Shosazaki, etc. Right. Is there a point, though, where you can capitalise on their price? Well, I'm trying. Are you doing this? I've tried. Right. I mean, I've put them up at kind of ridiculous prices, but they're good players. So, they, but no one's biting at all, not even a Discord message. So, I don't know, man. Oh, You're making me think about it again. I've just made up my mind. Now you've got me, yeah, you got me all rattled again. <laughs> This is the beauty of having a bunch of mediocre Asian guys. Uh, like, I can roll out the same boys. Yeah. There's like one division. You can drink as many league. beers as you want and you can, you just, yeah. yep, I'm in division three. Wait, hey, here he goes. I'm as in long division as I three. Don't listen to you. We should be sweet. <laughs> Breezy, come back. No, not you. Hey, get out. Breezy, up, 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 up. Come on, come on. There we go. Sid, good boy. Never work with children. Never animals. work with children or animals. Okay, um, where were we? Okay, now, Simon, what do you think about the reward boxes? Uh, I think that this week they're going to be absolutely fantastic. I think yep. That people are going to win a Joey Veerman. They're going to win an Erling Haaland or Haaland. Yep. Um, and then I think that they're going to be absolutely useless for the rest of the time. Um, Excuse you. What do you what do you think is going to happen? I think you're right. I think they're going to front load them a little bit. They're going to give out some juicy some juicy morsels just to kind of get people excited, get people because the reward boxes is kind of now pretty much most of what you win. Like there's not as many card rewards in the classic tournaments. Um, most people will be playing four reward boxes, so they need to incentivize. They need to tempt people to go and buy that extra card or two that they need to enter that extra team to try and win more reward boxes. You know what I mean? The multi-entry is a very crucial part of this new roadmap because it the more entries you have, the more chances you have, the more reward boxes you could potentially win, the more chance you've got to, you know, pull something great. So I think they're going to front load them and then for about three months after that, it's just going to be boosts. Okay, so the boosts hmm. are coming in. Now that sort of raises a good question because what do I do? Smaller gallery, I get my two boosts for the week. Yeah. How good? It's not coins. Fantastic. Yeah. You know, Fred from Denmark has 32 teams. Yep. Buy more cards. Spend more money. Spend more money. <laughs> Smart these bastards, aren't they? That's it. That's how they get you. Because the boost, it is quite ingenious, really, because, yeah, Fred from Denmark has got 32 teams. If he pulls 16 reward boxes and gets 16 or 15 boosts, all of a sudden he can just go and super supercharge his teams and like get them up to 15, 20%, you know, very quickly. So he's got an advantage because he's got a bigger gallery. So the rich, the rich get, get a medical emergency. So the, the rich get richer and the poor get poorer. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. It's, so I'm going to be on the street in one one. Yeah. three weeks. Yeah. Maybe you need to get on Twitter and re- oh, buddy, <laughs> you all right? You okay? Um, yeah, the, exactly. The rich get richer, the poorer get poorer. Right. Yeah. But so, what do I do with all my coins? Do I just? Ooh. I've been collecting coins for the past. A coin's dead. Nine months. I've said they've been dead ever since they came onto the platform. You were trying to sell them to me. I don't. Well, I don't know if they are handing out coins anymore. How can I something think die that never lived, Delster? <laughs> The dream, the dream lived. The dream of coins has lived in all of us, but I think it might be dead. I think it's time to think about. I think that now is the perfect time. It's like, it's like a smoke bomb. They've yeah. thrown a smoke bomb of this new structure. Now is the perfect time for Nicholas to just, just get slowly get rid of the coins, slowly slip them out into oblivion, and then maybe in a couple of weeks go at the bottom of like an update. Just mm. in some like really really fine print. Oh, and coins, coins are gone. gone. Yeah. Soft Can't launch. Use your it's like the opposite of a soft launch. A soft yeah. dismissal. So all these months where I haven't been buying raffle tickets for jerseys because I'm like, trust me, something big's going to come. Yeah. Soon I'm going to be out of bid for a you know a romantic dinner with Sho Sasaki. 
Yeah. That's and, off the table now, you reckon? I think that they're, they're dead. Great. No! No! Okay. I think boosts are now the new coins with a little bit more utility. Now, Simon, what do you think about um, – God, so unprofessional. What do you think about uh, this first couple of weeks? Do you think – I mean, for you, probably smart to just stay in contenders because if you win – a card in All Star, and it's a challenger player. What are you going to do? Go and buy more cards to go around it. <laughs> uh, you want to win contender cards, obviously. Yeah. Um, but what do you think as a as a wider? Do you think people will be attracted to the novelty of the new tournaments, and then will neglect some of the legacy tournaments, Cap Two Seventy, All Star? You know, like. So the, what, yeah. what? Sorry, what you're saying is a little zig when people zag situation. Is that what I'm hearing? Well, people will be. Initially, you know, people want something new all the time. Oh, so, shiny. So yes, that was. Should we be zigging when people are zagging? The problem is, Elster, I want to zag. I want to follow. You the want to zag? I mean, okay. I want to try it out. Yep. You know, I feel safe. Basic bitch. Basic. You know, making crazy. Um, but I think my concern is, I still reckon that the rewards and like the quality of the competition is going to be like skewed towards this new structure that they're rolling out. Yeah. My my concern okay. is that if you're playing the older ones, they've left them there for the old duff, nuffies yeah. to like chip away and have their, you know, cap 270. Mm. I, I just, my worry is that the, the rewards aren't going to be there to justify it. Yeah. Okay. That's a good point. I've got a contender gallery. Yeah. Why not just play contender? Yeah. No, fair enough. Now, yeah. something else that, we were talking about before um, before going live here is Rivals. Mm. Have you been playing Rivals? Oh, no, 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 no. Neither have I, I. I don't think, has anyone? Probably not. If we're not playing it, then I'm assuming the mass population yeah. is not if playing Yeah, if something, if I'm not physically doing something myself, then it makes sense that no one else would be. Yes. So does Rivals need saving, Simon? And can we do that? Can we save Rivals? I think so, Al. So I think it is very much a case of we've been given a new toy for Christmas and then Uncle Barry, who lives, you know, two hours away, is a little bit late and he rocks up with a new present. And we've been Uncle given... Barry? Yeah. Oh. And we've been given a new present. I thought he wasn't allowed back at Christmas. Uh, we've let, 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 okay. We're a very forgiving family. He's, he's rocked up. Mm. And he's given us this new structure. <laughs> it's all a metaphor. I'm yeah, yeah, okay. So, okay. Ba- Barry, Uncle Barry, drunk Uncle Barry has drunk arrived. Uncle he's got a new structure for us. Which, <laughs> okay. A new gift, which is the new structure. Okay, okay. The gift okay. is the structure. Yeah, okay. Yeah. I'm following you. I'm following you. Now, us as three, you just, as the children in this metaphor, yep. we've just been enjoying our present, but then Uncle Barry's rocked up two <laughs> hours later. With a new structure. <laughs> new structure. <laughs> And we all want to play with the new flashy toy that Uncle Barry has brought. Okay. And the new toy is the new divisions. Okay. My work, to sum all of that up, that perfectly worded metaphor is that we enjoyed Rubs. We thought we'd come alive. We were loving it. We were playing against each other. It was all fun. There's nothing to play for. At the moment, you know, we're all addicts. We're all, we all have, you know, we love the thrill of the chase. Yeah. And there's nothing quite there to grip onto. I'm not there to have fun. And I don't want their fucking liquor. And I don't want to fuck. I'm there to win. Right. It has become very boring just winning arena tickets. To win win arena tickets, to play, to win arena tickets. I think Sorare really tried to push this, like, play against your mates kind of thing, which we have been doing. Don't get me wrong. And it is fun to play a bit of rivals. But ultimately, people need something to strive for. They introduced the missions that was kind of, you know, you're playing for zaps. I thought I was all about the zaps. Turns out if the zaps don't mean anything, then there's no point to them. They've lost all meaning. Rivals has lost all meaning. So you're saying that you're not a fan of the zaps now? I'm not, because well, I, I, I'm I not think a fan. I can, I'm just I, ambivalent. I to think the zaps. I can remember a time when you were like, zaps are going to change the game. I thought they were. I'm going to flex my zaps on everyone. I thought and they now were. you're just throwing around, I'm a Div 1 kind of player. And that's your new. I'm too good for zaps. There I yeah, said there it. it is. There, there it is. I said it. Okay. So, because it, it used to be that there was like the, the streaks, and the streaks were hard to hit. I, I remember the stress of going for like my seventh in a row, and it, it was 
I was stressing out. Yeah. And it was a, a real accomplishment to hit seven in a row. I mean, I won 10 arena tickets, but I still got to seven, you know, and that was hard to do because you lose one and you go back to the beginning. Then they made it really easy. They kind of nerfed it. They were like, you can just hit three in a row and you can open a loot box. But then everyone was just winning arena tickets and it kind of, again, lost that meaning. So I think we need to bring back some proper challenges, bring back long streaks and have set rewards and have them to be, have them as good rewards. You could give out power ups. That's one step up. That's better than arena tickets. We've already established that. Better than coins. You could give out limited cards. You get, you could give out good, li- like you could say, if you get 10 arena wins in a row, you will win a tier one limited. I mean, a tier one limited to them is, it's not that much. And to get to 10 arena wins in a row, you've really got to hustle. You've got to have arena tickets, first of all. So there you go. Your arena tickets have value now. You want arena tickets. Let's go back to the beginning of Sora Arrivals when everyone's like, I haven't got enough tickets. Where can I get some tickets? Can I buy some tickets from you? you? Need to get back to that kind of attitude. At the moment, everyone's just got tickets lying around. Hell, I don't even collect my daily ticket anymore. Yeah. I don't need it. Exactly. The fridge exactly. is full. I haven't collected The fridge is full. Couldn't have put it better myself. Now, would you, Simon, play arena matches if you knew that if you got to say seven or ten arena wins in a row you would be guaranteed a tier one limited would you play yeah yeah absolutely i think a lot of people i think a lot of people would but they don't want people playing rivals but what why would you play alster why would you why would i go and spend money to go buy cards to try and win a tier one limited in the pro competition when i can just hustle my little 2d off and win a tier one in rivals. Well, you know why, Simon? Now this is where the this is where because when rivals came out, we were we were everyone was a big fan. We were like, rivals is going to change the game. It's such a good entry point for people. People are going to buy it. This is you know they're going to buy cards to play rivals, and then it's going to be like, oh, well, you can also put those cards in SO five, and it was kind of this, you know. I remember us saying, we're like, if they can just nail the transition from Rivals to SO5. Why you should put money in. Everyone's a winner. Yeah. If there are set rewards and the rewards are good, yes, you can hustle your little 2D off. But if you're sitting on nine wins in a row and you know that one more win gets you a tier one limited, you're going to go and you're going to buy some limited cards to enter the arena because you want to win. You're not going to leave it up to chance with your common boys. You're going to be like, right, I'm playing Portland versus NYCFC. I'm going to go and buy a full Portland stack so that I can win this Rivals game because it's worth it because there's a tier one at the end of it. And then once you've got those cards, hey, there's your SO5 lineup. Why not play it in in Challenges this week? You know, like get people to play Rivals and really care about it and the rest will kind of flow on from there, I think. I agree. And I think we have a unique perspective because we brought the lunch wheel into the world. We've battled out for lunch wheels over the past couple of months, right? Mm. Now, for us, a lunch wheel win, like, there's a lot riding on it, like pride. Yep. Lunch. Yep. Very important Lunch, aspect. yeah. Now, there's been times where we've been one all in, a, in our best of three. I've been extremely tempted to buy. I almost bought a limited just to give me a little bump. I yep. didn't do it because I thought it might have been cheating, but I would have done it. Yeah. I think, like, you look at it like that. Like, when there's actually something tangible on the line, mm. I'm willing to spend $3 on a yep. Nahul Guzman limited to give me a better chance of winning. Yeah, exactly. So I do, I do see the logic. I have another idea. It's a little bit more left field. Okay. So bear with me. Hold on to your hands. Now, my problem is you, t- you touched on the arena tickets and that no one wants to win. I would argue that no one wants to win these shitty Tier 5 limiteds even more. Because, like, it's great to win a limited, like, yay, but they're so useless. They're so worthless. Yeah. For, for a big dog like you, it's, it, there's no real appeal. <laughs> I, I, I must admit, I was excited when I won my Tier 5 limited from Shut up. Rivals. So there's no real appeal to it. So what I'm thinking, Alistair, yeah. to change the game, is instead of Tier 5 limiteds, now a great little money-making way to burn some cars that they've just they'll never be able to sell again, is bring people up from the dead. I'm talking retired. I'm talking, like, Permanently injured retarded. players. Retired. <laughs> you are retired. Uh, yes. <laughs> retired or okay. injured players. Or players from a league that's not covered. Yep. And I think that they can do some research into it. So I think that they can dive deep into your gallery. 
maybe who was the first card you bought? Ooh. Who have you had the most cards of? Ooh. Who have you traded out of your gallery and then b- brought back in that very same day? Georgi Mihailovic. Georgi Mihailovic. So what I'm saying, Alistair, is how would you feel if you pulled a Georgi Mihailovic, mm. still currently playing, known as Peak of His Powers? For example, a Burak Yilmaz holds a great place in my heart. Ooh. If I pulled a Burak Yilmaz, I'm not sure if he's still playing. They've got to have some Burak Yilmaz's lying but, around somewhere. But even if he's not playing, I would be stoked. I'd be like, oh, my God, Burak, remember? Mm. Do you remember, Alistair? How about that <laughs> random Asian guy that I bought my first week of the platform? If I pulled him, I'd be like, bro, that's someone I haven't thought of in a long time. Would you even recognize him? Of course I would, Alistair. <laughs> The nostalgia aspect. Uh-huh. That's more exciting than a tier five limited. Okay. Who was that who was that African guy that broke Sarer in the early days because he was like a tier two reward? A Tebow. A Tebow. How would you feel if you won a Tebow? You'd feel great. I'd feel great. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Oh man, a Tebow. That's bring bringing back some memories. God. <laughs> He's still playing? Let's look him up. Um How is he? I don't know. I wonder how it's going. Um, yeah, look, I like that idea. I think, I mean, Legends cards are, are dead right now, you know, but I think there'd be lots of people that would be happy to pick up a Zinedine Zidane, you know, limited card just just for the lols. So I think you're right. I think, I think like, pulling some cards that otherwise have no utility is what you're saying. Like, maybe some old, like some retired player cards, uh, signed cards. Small heads. Legends, big heads. Small heads. Yeah, that one where... Um, uh, the Santos keeper is like this big. I like that one. Perfect. I would love that. I would. I would pay a lot of money for that. So is that potentially an avenue? Good. Have you got any ideas to save rivals? Apart from the one um, that I just went through. Um, I don't know. Million dollar jackpot. Just that'd, that'd work. One guy a year. They just go. Yep. You hit your three. <laughs> He's a million dollars. I quit. <laughs> I open my own hotel. Congratulations. Great PR stunt. <laughs> Just turns pink and you're like, oh, arena tickets again. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone's excited. Everyone's excited. Hey, hey. One million dollars. <laughs> oh, the chaos. The chaos, the energy. All right. Um, I think we've solved rivals. It's okay, guys. All right. Um, what else do we need to cover, Simon? Have we brought up underdogs? I'm here for underdog, 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 underdog. We haven't, haven't. We need to bring back. It's been so long. It's been so long since we've even done a podcast. I can't even remember who our underdogs were. I'm assuming they didn't win. They didn't win, no. No, I think we would have known if they would have won. I think it was Sheffield, wasn't it? 6 0. 6 0 thrashing. You, you put them in the, the rivals lineup. Dead to us. I did, yeah. Everyone <laughs> now, was like, here it, is. here it is. If you were going for your 10th arena win, yeah. would you have committed to the underdogs? That would be a big ball move. Abs- I mean, not a big ball million dollars on the line. <laughs> well, that's true. That's right. See, there you go. Um, okay, well, let's, let's look up, let's find out who the underdog is for this month, this week, this episode. Where are we? Oh, okay. All right, let's have a look. Okay, so so we decided last week that we were gonna. It's going only going to be licensed teams. Yes, and yeah. we make the rules. We make we do make the rules. Yeah, that's correct. Okay, so this week the biggest underdog is Luton. Luton like Town. It. I like it up too. Up against Tottenham too. Up against Tottenham, so it's a win-win for me or a lose-lose. Basically. I either Tottenham smash the underdogs, yeah, and I win in season Premier League for the week. Perfect. Or Luton win, and I have to spend money on buying. I don't really want to buy their jersey. Uh, Buy a stack, yeah, which is going to smash next year. Well, when they're in Championship, you'd say they're probably one of the teams to get. Absolutely, Ross Barkley might be the best player on the platform this time next year. Right. So basically, you can't lose. Worst case scenario, it's a two-one Tottenham win. Five minutes later. You can read minds. Get up. That's the worst case. Yeah. Vicario concedes two. <laughs> um, 
So there is probably some downside, but I don't mind it. I think there are chance. What about what if we bought? What if we got? We, it's been a while since we talked about the Wolfsburg pin. Oh shit! <laughs> the original underdogs. Yes. Uh, they have not won a single thing for me this year. They have been terrible. They're really bad. Proper. Really like the epitome of of mediocre. Yeah. Um, that was a bad team to get behind. But I'm just noticing this Luton Town badge, and I've never really noticed it before. Yes, you should get it tattooed onto yourself. I should, that's a good idea. I mean, I kind of like it. It's got the like the schoolboy thing going on. I mm. don't know what that's all about. Um, and it, it's got like a beehive, and it what's that? A, a rose, a thistle, so, a bushel of wheat. <laughs> like I, the settlers of Catan. Yeah, I think there's something in that. I reckon going on a deep dive of teams badges because there'd be Ooh. some random shit in there maybe New some segment like, alert. stuff maybe some yeah some illuminati shit yeah yeah next time we'll have a deep dive into the you know the hoffenheim logo and there's just you know some racist shit in there <laughs> <laughs> um, every chance you're right um <laughs> all right up the loot in town um so but not too much because if they lose they're dead to us i'm trying to think if there's a way in which no, unless all of my players get clearances off the line in a four in a two nil Luton win. No, I'm pretty much screwed either. You way. could get some pens in it and just everyone missed them. But then human men will hit the pen. Mm. But he, no, they've just got to win. It's a tough one. I need a wait, I need a Vicar, I need a Vicario pen save. Who are you on who are you rooting for here? Well I'm trying to find the best case scenario. Vicario pen save. Perfect. Okay. Human son goal. So we're one all at this point, okay? I've got a, I've got a when, decisive when from my Luton, keeper. So Luton score. Luton score. Then no, I'm... no, no, perfect. Here we go. Clearance off the line from Romero. No. Headed in by... So perfect scenario. Charlie Morris. Perfect scenario. This, is, this is real. Vicario saves the pen, oh. but then it, on the follow-up it's put in. Put in still by... Still gets the... Carlton Morris. Perfect. Yeah. Human Sun scores. We're one apiece. Lovely. Romero clearance off the line. As he does. Yeah. We don't want to get too far ahead of ourselves. This is tricky now because it's very delicately bad. Oh, no. Hyung Min Sun goal assisted by Madison. Yep. So now I've got four decisives. Yep. And then I've got Douglas Louise in the Aston Villa game. So he can just, as long as he does well. <laughs> what is he in there? Just, just don't ask questions. <laughs> then a late Luton goal. Yeah. Once all my players have been subbed off. We're still at 60. Yeah, he's still on 60-something because he hasn't been guillotined. Yeah. So it's doable. Yeah, we're not asking for much. No. <laughs> 2-1 Luton win. Perfect. With all of those decisives. Sweet. Okay. Good stuff. All right. Um, is there anything else, Simon? Do we want to spin the lunch wheel? Not right now, obviously, but should we bring the lunch wheel back? Oh, I like it. I'm getting a little bit hungry. It's been a little while since we last spun. I think mm. I won or did you get the eggs? Well, I think the last spin was on the, uh, oh, no, the curry. You did get the curry. Was it delicious? I was pretty drunk, so I don't remember it. But <laughs> that's right. <laughs> that's the best way to do it. Okay. Um, all right. Well, let's pick a game. Let's have a look. What have we got? Now we could obviously pick the big game of the week: Arsenal versus Man City. But you do have Man City players in your arsenal. Funnily enough. Oh, I, to be fair, I can't fit them into a cap for rivals, so they're pretty much useless. True. But true. That would be a good game. Okay. Now, just, just quickly, how good has the Premier League been, like in terms of this title race? It's been pretty good. Have we got any hot tips? Liverpool to win. Liverpool to win. Oh, we're going to run out. I don't think so. Yeah. Okay, let's see if we can find a close game. I mean, it's got to be a Prem game. Well, let's just go one we can watch, hey? Cincinnati, New York. Ugh. Sebastian Blanco. Yeah. How about the Copa de Tejas, Austin v Dallas? And I promise I won't play my. Hader O'Brien. Do we have a deal? Or is that just a shit game of That's football? That's a really shit game of football. It's a shit game of football. Is there any Prem? There's got to be some Prem. Prem, Prem, Prem. Um, Probably look up Saturday night. Good. Yeah, I could do that. But that's, Newcastle, that too West easy. Ham. You've got players. Oh, yeah, Newcastle, West Ham. You've got, is that tonight? You've got Dan Burns. Tomorrow. Tomorrow. Do have Dan Burns. You've got Premier League on Google. PL, you just need the PL. PL? Yeah, it comes God up. God knows where I could be taken. Oh, these are all Bournemouth Everton. Battle of the Shitters. Yeah. 
Liverpool, Brighton. Oh, you got Liverpool players. Oh, do you? None of them are fit. So. <laughs> Aston Villa, Wolves. I think well, Newcastle. Was Louise. Oh, yeah. I think Newcastle, West Ham's our go. It's a ten thirty on Saturday. But you're not going to play your damn bird. I won't play. I won't play my damn bird anyway. All right, deal. Simon learns Japanese. Moshi Donaldo des. Sasaki show do Pansu go Ayurokobi di Bakuhatsu Suru. Now, I do have one request. Oh, yep. I would love to see some, you know, it's we're very busy lives. We're mm. trying to keep our ear to the ground of what's been happening throughout the week. But we have had some, you know, little hiatus. Some people send in clips mm. that they've seen, of course. Yep. You know, the goal in the Windy City. Yes. Oh, Which yes. A classic. I can't believe we didn't talk about it. Um, what do you want to talk about it now? Great goal. Great goal. Um, Sums up MLS, I think. It does. Callan Acosta, not quite sure what he was trying to do. Kicked it straight Terry into... Terry Antonis, I reckon. Just... He could learn a thing or two from Terry Antonis. <laughs> he kicked it in completely the opposite direction. He kicked it perpendicular to the goal. He kicked it at the, the, the grandstand. And then the ball basically stopped in midair, golden snitch style. Did a couple of 360s, right turn. Killed a small I don't child. want to say it's a conspiracy. There was a few small children killed. Um, Sir, poor old Sirwa from Montreal never had a chance. I mean, he's just thinking, what the fuck? And he's probably got himself on Sorare. That was the third goal. So he's just lost. His, he's just got a negative decisive. I mean, that's the most MLS goal I've ever seen. That's great. Well, I want to see some more. So if, if you see anything throughout the week, it can be a really bad knee slide. It could be yep. a really bad miss. Really bad misses it are could great. It be, you know, Joe Willis conceding like seven goals. Yeah. You know, anything and everything. Send it's... us some funny shit. Yeah. And you'll, you'll see us up on the podcast. Yeah, we'll give you a special shout out. For our special boys and girls. All right. All right. Good job. We'll see you next week. Catch you, mates. <laughs>